Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Avijit Vikram, Head of Investor Relations. On behalf of India Mart Intermesh Limited, I welcome you all to the company's Quarter 1 FY 2025 Earnings Webinar. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions once the presentation concludes. Joining us today from the management side, we have Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Vijesh Agarwal, Full-Time Director, Mr. Jitin Devan, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Prateek Chandra, Chief Strategy Officer. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainty. Kindly refer to slide number three of the earnings presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Naya, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Dinesh Agarwal for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Abhijit. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to India Mart's Quarter 1 FY25 Earnings Webinar. We have circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our own website as well as Stock Exchange website. We are sure that you would have gone through the presentation and we would be happy to take any questions afterwards. I am pleased to report that India Mart has delivered a consolidated collection from customers of Rs. 366 crores in the quarter one, representing year-on-year -year growth of 14%. Deferred revenue has grown by 23% to 1,474 crores on consolidated basis. Consolidated revenue from operation has grown by 17% to 331 crores. Unique business inquiries grew to 25 million, representing year-on-year -year growth of 15%. Our total paying subscribers have grown to 216,000. As we have been communicating since the last few quarters, we continue to see more than anticipated churn on the customer base in the silver bucket. In addition to this, our new supplier acquisitions were slightly lower this quarter compared to what we have been doing during the last few quarters. As a result, we have been able to add only 1,500 new paying suppliers on the net basis in this quarter. On the other hand, our platinum and gold customers, which constitute approximately 50% of our customer base and 75% of the revenue, continue to have low churn and grew both very well in terms of ARPU as well as count. We will continue to make investment and undertake measures to enhance customer experience and improve retention, as well as drive deeper penetration of the customers, <coughs> paying customers in the focus city. On the inorganic investment front, in keeping with the vision of empowering businesses digitally, we are pleased to share that we have got into an agreement to acquire 10% stake in Ms. Mrs. Baldo Technologies Private Limited, which operates ID5, an integrated identity platform offering products and solutions for KYC, background verification, merchant onboarding, uh, buyer onboarding, risk mitigation, and digital privacy. Further, as communicated in the last earnings con call, as well as on the stock exchange, we have onboarded Mr. Jitin Divan as the new chief financial officer of the company. Now, I will hand over the call to Brijesh for the update about busy infotech. Thank you, and over to you, Bridges. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Busy has done our net winning of 23.4 crore uh, in this quarter, representing a bio Y growth of 4%. The revenue from operations have grown by 15% uh, to 15.5 crores. The deferred revenues have grown by 41% to 51.5 crores. Uh, EBITDA for the quarter uh, is at 1 crore uh, with margins of 7%. Uh, the net profit for the quarter was 3 crores. The cash uh, from operations was at 11.8 crores. Uh, during this quarter, uh, Busy has sold uh, 9.7k licenses, uh, closing the total count of 373,000 licenses at the end of June 2024. Uh, we are focused on uh, growing our new uh, customer base and uh, increase the overall growth rate in the coming quarter. Uh, with this, I will hand over the call to Jitin to uh, update about the financial performance. Thank you, sir. 
Good evening, everyone. I will take you to the financial performance for the quarter ending June 2024. Consolidated collections from customers was Rs. 366 crore in the quarter, representing year on year growth of 14%. India Mart standalone collections from customers for the quarter were at 341 crore, registering year on year growth of 15%. The standalone revenue from operations stood at 315 crore, registering year on year growth of 18%. Our growth in revenue was primarily driven by over 13% improvement in realization from paying suppliers and the remaining by increase in number of paying suppliers. Deferred revenue stood at 1421 crore, an increase of 22% on year on year basis. EBITDA of India Mart standalone business stood at Rs. 117 crore, representing a margin of healthy 37%. This margin expansion is due to organic operating leverage certain cost optimization initiatives and saving due to lower customer acquisitions. As our customer growth picks up, the margin expansion will normalize to gradual operating leverage inherent in the business. Consolidated net profit for the quarter was Rs. 114 crores. Consolidated cash generating from operations was Rs. 136 crores. Consolidated cash in treasury balance stood at 2,319 crores as of June 30, 2024. Thank you very much, everyone. We are now ready to take any questions. Thank you, Jitin. We will now begin the Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question to the panelists, kindly raise your hand and allow camera and microphone access. Alternatively, you may type your question in the chat menu and we will revert on it. Please restrict to two questions so that we may be able to address questions from all the participants. Now we'll wait for a few seconds while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Sachin from Boca. Hi, Sachin. Please go ahead with your question. Sachin, please unmute yourself. Hi, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, my two questions are first question, uh, wanted to understand a bit more on EBITDA margin. Uh, just wanted to double check that there is no one-offs associated with that and should we consider this as a steady state EBITDA margin going ahead? Of course, you know, as in how the operation leverage comes, you might see a bit of an improvement. So that's question number one. Question number two, uh, wanted to again understand a bit more on net ads. Uh, for last few quarters, it's hovering in the 2000 odd range. Uh, when should we see an inflection point coming uh, where these net ads accelerate going ahead? So Jatin, you want to yeah. take up the EBITDA sure. margin question? Sure. Thank you, Sachin, for your question. So EBITDA margin uh, is 37% for the current quarter. So uh, if you see about two to three percent was the operation leverage which, which we were supposed to get uh, because in Q4 there were there are higher collections and therefore collection related costs will also be there uh, which has not been in Q1. So that is one. Uh, second, then we uh, were doing few cost initiative, cost optimization initiatives in the last few quarters which have been now uh, lines and therefore there is a uh, saving which is structured. And then the last bit of it is since, uh, as you know, that we have not been able to add uh, the customer addition is on the lower side and therefore the cost related to that is also on the lower side. Once it picks up, then the cost will again be there on that side and therefore you will see a lower a bit of margin to that extent. Just, just to add, uh, uh, April and May are generally the uh, examination time. So most of the joinings that you have seen uh, in the headcount uh, are uh, June uh, later half joining as well as uh, some of the joinings have happened in July. So some of these costs will come back and uh, so we expect the margin to uh, uh, taper off a little bit uh, from here, uh, maybe at, at around 33-34% and that should be the steady state margin from now on. 
on the net ad side as i said the churn in the silver and uh, uh, silver monthly and silver annual buckets continued uh, uh, to be stub on while we have taken certain steps uh, uh, to to avoid churn in the uh, tier 3 tier 4 so we have stopped onboarding customers which were traditionally high churn uh, location or high churn uh, areas but the results of that uh, are yet not visible because uh, the main uh, cities are also affected by churn so i think uh, we continue to uh, make adjustments into our product as well as our strategy to see uh, what is the change expectation from the market or what is the uh, what is it that we are not able to find correctly uh, and, and the only thing that i can say is that we are continuing to work on that side i don't want to uh, press the pedal on the grass edition until unless we have got the handle of the churn so uh, let's wait for another uh, two quarters to see if the churn is able to come under the control and we are able to get back to a higher customer addition. But uh, on the margin side, as we said, you know, if you really see in the last uh, year, year and a half, we have consistently improved on the margin from 26, 27% to now uh, 34, 35% uh, range. Thank you. Uh, just one quick follow up out here. Assuming what you said, let's say, you know, uh, for next couple of quarters, at least for six months, uh, the net ads remain at these levels. So do we assume EBITDA margins be high to current levels? And then eventually as the net ads pick up, the margin should normalize to 33, 34. So ideally and logically for next few quarters, margin should be in the range of 36. And when your net ads pick up, that should normalize to 33, 34. Is that a fair assessment? No, as I said, uh, from 37, I think the 3% uh, uh, will immediately come back. Uh, so around 34, I am pretty sure that we should be able to deliver uh, over the next two quarters. Uh, I cannot comment uh, when the uh, net ads increase, uh, whether we'll go to 33 or whether we'll uh, be able to maintain 34 by then. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Sachin. Next question is from the line of just Jasdeep Palia from Clockwine Capital. Hi, Jasdeep, please go ahead with your question. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, so thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, my question is, uh, do you try to ascertain if the, the the pricing is acceptable to your clients in the sense that the cost that they're incurring on India Mart, is it making, is it driving value for them? So uh, as of now, the ARPU, the, the increase at 13%, it's pretty high, you know, and it looks good on the presentation, the margins have increased, but uh, does it make sense to actually reduce pricing and drive net ads and let's say let the margin remain at 29 30 percent which was the case uh, last year so just want to hear your thoughts because the the the, the if the pricing is beyond the mean of the customer the, you know you you might face even more customer churn in future which is bad for the long-term health of the business so sir if you if you see the uh, breakup of the ARPU, the most of the gain is coming from top 10% of the customers, while the most of the uh, churn is coming from bottom 50% of the customers. So bottom 50% of the customers, the neither there has been any price increase. I mean, we are at the same price point as we were before COVID. So there has not been any uh, price uh, increase on the silver monthly or silver annual except for the fact that we gave a discount of uh, 20 odd percent during the covid which we withdrawn after the covid other than that most of the uh, rp 
Rafu growth has happened in the top 10% of the customers, uh, not in the uh, overall customer base. So the assumption that the price would help us uh, reduce the churn uh, seems incorrect there. Uh, on the on the top top tier of the customer, as an as and when we feel. Uh, also, we have not increased the prices on the top tier of the customer. As you know, uh, we we told you that we have been experimenting with the uh, category based pricing, and we have been uh, developing a framework for city and category based charging. And that framework is now being adopted by larger uh, number of newer sales, and that is resulting into the uh, higher ARPU. So it is only when certain categories which are uh, which are a very high value uh, product uh, there only the price uh, has been increased which is reflecting in the arpu but at the um, uh, at the entry level of categories there has not been an increase in the price yeah. and at the churn also at the uh, gold and platinum level continues to remain uh, at around 1% per month Got it, sir. Uh, so my second question is, uh, what's the growth in gold and platinum uh, uh, subscribers, both in terms of number of subscribers and in terms of sales to gold and platinum clients? So we we don't uh, directly sell in gold and platinum. We generally uh, upsell from uh, monthly uh, and uh, annual silver. So we so most of this growth is coming from. Uh, upsell uh, from so silver monthly and silver annual uh, as i said uh, we remained at around uh, we used to be at around 48 odd percent customers from gold and platinum now we are at around 50 percent of the customers from gold and platinum so in the last one year while the overall customer base has grown by only 15000 i think the gold and platinum itself has grown by uh, eight eight odd thousand Got it, sir. And what's the uh, growth in sales to gold and platinum customers on a YOI basis for this quarter? I did not understand that. So your revenue, which is coming from gold and platinum customer only, uh, how uh, how has it increased on YOI basis for this quarter? So uh, as I said, the about gold and platinum customers count about. 50% of the customer count and about 75% of the revenue. Got it. And got it, sir. What was this revenue percentage last year? So last year is uh, about 48 and 72, maybe. 73, okay. maybe. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thanks, Jasdeep. Next question is from the line of Kushagar from Old Bridge Capital. Hi, Kushagar. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just two questions. Uh, so, uh, on this, you know, uh, what I see is uh, the concentration at the top is increasing, right? So the question really is on, you know, the category saturation. I mean, are your categories getting saturated uh, and hence the star suppliers or, you know, the gold and platinum guys are gaining, gaining the most in those respective categories. Uh, of course, them being able to, you know, uh, corner a lot of lead generation, which is happening on your platform. So uh, the question is, are there challenges on the expansion within the existing categories? So are your existing categories sort of saturating? Uh, and then a sort of a attached question is for you to grow from here on, uh, if we have to look at the growth levers for you, uh, what would be the growth levers, uh, you know, and how important would be uh, the expanding of categories uh, in your overall growth drivers? That That's my first question. So if you see uh, on the category saturation, uh, side if you see from say three years ago or say five years ago uh, 
our top categories used to be five six percent of our total customer base uh, when when we were like one hundred and fifty thousand paying customers. Now at two hundred thousand odd paying customers, the top categories are still seven eight percent. So it's not that the categories have grown uh, only on the top side of the uh, platform. In fact, uh, if you if you see this particular slide, maybe five, uh, four years ago, uh, I think you will see the um, percentages have not uh, really changed. And uh, uh, so there are multiple categories which are available for us. Similarly, for the uh, cities also, uh, we have been stronger in uh, New Delhi. We have been stronger in uh, western part of the country, uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat. We have been okay in Tamil Nadu, but we have not been so great uh, so far in uh, places like uh, Karnataka and uh, Andhra and Telangana. So I think there is uh, still uh, a lot more penetration which is possible uh, across uh, many of those cities. Uh, third, uh, so on the growth lever, as I continue to say, uh, you know, every year our monetizable categories increase by uh, 10% from the previous year. So if we had only 20,000 odd monetizable categories pre-COVID, Today, we have about 40,000 odd monetizable categories. And similarly, if we had only five big monetizable cities, now we have maybe 10 monetizable cities today. So I don't think there is a uh, issue with respect to uh, you know, either the growth lever or a near-term saturation. Uh, having said that, uh, <clears throat> I have still not been able to prove why the silver uh, churn is not coming under control. While the uh, gold and platinum customers are uh, continuing to uh, be a promoter of the platform and be a very, very strong user of the platform. I mean, last month, one of the highest uh, uh, engagement uh, in terms of buyer and sellers both, uh, if you see all, all of those numbers are going highest ever. Uh, so, so there's something that that has changed post COVID that we are still not, and, and a lot of our manpower is also new. Uh, so, so we are continuing to struggle on that um, silver churn side. Other than that, there is no other no other problem. Okay. So to understand this better, uh, what you were explaining for the category expansion and the cities available, let's say for one of those industries, uh, let's say construction materials, uh, you would be very heavy within, you would be performing very well in Delhi, Maharashtra, Gujarat, uh, construction and building raw material, uh, the first one. And, but Tamil Nadu and some of the southern states may not be as good. So to understand this right, uh, the question really was within the states where you have already marked, uh, uh, where you have already significant presence, uh, and the category is big for you. Is there a case where, uh, you know, whatever leads are getting generated within that particular uh, category, uh, the top guys, the star suppliers are actually cornering more and more of it. And hence, the pain point is being felt by the silver and uh, the, uh, the smaller customers. Is this what's happening in your platform or not really? So uh, our platform works like this. Uh, so in terms of quantity, yes. But in terms of quality, everybody gets equal opportunity to participate. Our quality of the RFQs, whether you are a star supplier or whether you are a, a silver monthly customer, uh, the uh, the quality of the leads that you will uh, see uh, or the timeliness of the leads that you will see, there is no restriction on that. Uh, however, yes, uh, since you are paying 30,000 rupees versus somebody is paying 3 lakh rupees, uh, the quantity of the leads uh, you can consume higher. So uh, there is an equal opportunity. Uh, uh, within that, yes, you may be competing with uh, star supplier or leading supplier because of the uh, on on every buyer. Uh, however, uh, the the younger suppliers also have this agility that they they are the owner of the shop or owner of the factory directly deals with the buyer so uh, and they 
while the larger suppliers typically depend on uh, some India Mart staffers, uh, maybe one or two uh, expert lead managers who who work there uh, <clears throat> as a lead management uh, person for India Mart. So I think there are advantages, disadvantages to both. Uh, while so so we are able to retain lesser number of uh, the total customers that we used to onboard and uh, used to retain uh, versus uh, versus today uh, versus the uh, uh, pre covid era and that 10% lesser number that we are able to uh, retain is making all the uh, difference understood sure this is helpful uh, uh, the second question really is on the uh, traffic and the underlying metrics so if i look at uh, your traffic uh, now, uh, even on a quarterly as well as on an annual basis, has been uh, hovering around the same range of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 25, 26 crores quarterly, 100 to 110 crores a year. And the conversions basically, which is visible in those unique business inquiries are also holding on to that same 9, 10 percentage. So uh, the question really is, uh, are there a sort of levers? Uh, to uh, uh, for you to attract more traffic uh, or sort of increase that unique business inquiries from here on and also if you can give a sense on uh, uh, the traffic uh, uh, like which categories are getting more traffic and how the category mix has changed uh, in your traffic uh, despite the overall headline traffic number remaining stagnant for the last couple of uh, last many quarters actually yeah that's my second question so while uh, while you are right that uh, traffic seems to be uh, stagnant, but uh, unique business inquiries, uh, if you see uh, this particular quarter have grown by 15% year on year. So they have been, uh, you know, for the last three quarters, they've grown uh, well. Yes, you are right in the FY24, uh, in the first half of the FY24, they, they, they did not grow. But now uh, it is at a healthy run rate of about uh, 100 million unique uh, business inquiries uh, for the year, which is uh, even higher than the FY21-22 when, when there was so much of shortage of material uh, and so much of shortage of uh, medicine and other things. So if you compare pre-COVID, I think we are, uh, uh, we are going to be about 30% higher unique business inquiries. Uh, in terms of traffic, uh, uh, yes, uh, there there is a, <clears throat> there is a uh, flatness, and we believe that uh, uh, if that flatness continues, we we will try and uh, address that through through the digital advertising and through the digital video advertising. But we have not yet uh, going there. Uh, but if if need be, we'll go there. Right. Uh, just one last data question. Uh, if you can give us the gross ads number uh, uh, in first quarter, uh, that's it. Thank you and all the best. We only disclose the net ad numbers. Okay, all right. Thank you. So next, uh, we will take a question from the chat box. This question is from Abhishek Bhandari. Uh, so are we on track to achieve 20,000 paying subscribers addition is in FY25. Do we expect a significant improvement in net addition in H2 FY25? See, given the last two quarters, uh, last three quarters of 2000, 2500 and 1500, I'm in no position to commit any numbers on the net ad as of now. I can only uh, say let's go quarter by quarter. And as soon as uh, we we hit uh, five, 6,000 again, and then only I can give you any year end number. Uh, on the revenue side and on, on other sides, I think uh, most of our numbers are driven by collection so that you know already uh, what is going to come. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vivekanand from Ambit Capital. Hi, Vivek. Please go ahead with your question. Oh. 
Vivekanand. Thanks for allowing me the opportunity to ask question. Uh, I, I, I want to start with the uh, functional PNL that you present where you have a disclosure between the customer service cost and the sales and marketing cost. So my question here is that, yes, churn is an issue and you are struggling with your manpower as well as perhaps consumer behavior or, or supplier behavior. Uh, but why are you cutting on the selling and marketing costs? That is something I want to understand because we saw something similar play out in FY21 as well, right? You curtailed your selling and marketing costs. And then suddenly when things opened up, you then had to uh, run run to hire people. And and that that is currently still hurting you, right? Because you are saying that many of your sales and marketing staff members are new. So why curtail this in the first place? Understand that you should you are curtailing gross ads. I understand that. But uh, why why curtail manpower in this? That's question one. Mm -hmm. And uh, do, do you want me to ask the second question or do you want to respond? No, let to me answer again? first. So, uh, you know, I think about last three quarters, we have been trying to do is to cut down on the areas where, uh, uh, you know, to identify the areas, wh whether cities or the categories, where we were uh, onboarding customers and uh, losing them at a faster speed. So, uh, what we have tried to do is uh, cut down on those areas. And that is what is being reflected here uh, as a percentage. Also, as a percentage of revenue, uh, there is some uh, bit of a... Uh, uh, some bit of a natural uh, leverage that is coming because uh, the most of it is uh, coming from customer service cost. So customer service cost uh, is the manpower of the uh, existing customer servicing and sales and marketing is the uh, manpower of the new client acquisition uh, side. So, so, the, so we have only curtailed on the gross uh, addition side. Uh, and we will, uh, as soon as we get the handle on the churn, we will probably uh, reinvest on that. But you are right, uh, we should not uh, go uh, quite uh, uh, up and down uh, from 17% to 14% like that. Also, uh, we have in the, this uh, selling and marketing, essentially this is the cost of acquiring a new customer. And roughly around 50% of our sales comes in from the channel partners wherein the cost is completely variable to the uh, acquisitions made in that particular quarter. So in case if there is a change in the uh, acquisitions, this cost will accordingly move come lower or higher for that matter. So your your channel partner strategy remains the same. Is that is that correct? That the uh, approach of uh, adding new new suppliers, new paid suppliers, half of them are still coming via channel partners, even though you have curtailed gross ads? Yeah, by and large, yes, by and large. Yeah, okay, okay. And, and sir, uh, if I may press a little bit on this, uh, the insourcing strategy that you were discussing about, uh, that, that hasn't had any bearing on this channel partner model at all, is it? Or... Uh, no, 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 no. So, uh, so there are two, two things. One is uh, our uh, our own, uh, see there are about 50% sales were coming from our own staff, but they were not uh, on a India Mart role. They were uh, they were on a uh, third party temp uh, staffing role. Uh, while there is uh, channel partners, the channel partners have their own uh, different, different uh, organ channel partners have their uh, own. So, what we have done is uh, uh, stop using a third-party payroll uh, uh, temp staffing service uh, because uh, to contain the employee attrition a bit. And uh, in the last two quarters, I think it's employee attrition has come down, uh, which should help us uh, increase the uh, in, increase the efficiency. And some of this. Uh, is also resulted into reduced cost of customer acquisition uh, on a gross basis. However, on a net basis, since the churn is so high, 
the uh, net uh, customer addition cost still looks very very high but uh, the those efficiencies have also resulted into improved uh, operating margin right okay i know kushagra asked this question how much can you uh, stretch the r2 lever and uh, if you if you can help us understand uh, like, like we know that the top 1% r2 uh, is almost four times of that of the top uh, uh, top ten percent. Uh, within the top one percent, also is there is there a very big differential in the ARPU, or are they are these two thousand paid suppliers uh, roughly paying something similar? I'm just trying to understand what would be the highest that a supplier is spending on India mark. Is it like five crore, two crore? Is it that big, or is it no, no, very no, close? No, no, fifty lakh, fifty lakh ka India, fifty lakh. I see. Okay. Thank you so much and uh, all the very best. Thanks, Vivekanand. Next question is from the line of Nikhil from Nuwama. Hi, Nikhil. Please go ahead with your question. Hey, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is uh, again on margin. Uh, just want uh, some clarity here. So Pratik, what you mentioned that uh, we generally pay lower to channel partner when they are less sub supplier addition, but that should not impact your margin on Q&Q &Q basis, right? Uh, given supplier addition remain low uh, since last two, three quarter. And second thing again here is uh, what uh, Dinesh sir mentioned that you know uh, the sales and marketing expense uh, is lower because of less cross addition, and that's why we are not investing. So are we saying that uh, you know given we don't have uh, clarity in terms of uh, what is causing the higher churn, that's why we are controlling the spend on uh, sales and marketing. As soon as we let's say figure out the challenges in algorithm or some other issue, we'll start pressing the case again which will help us in supplier addition and will lead to, again, increase in sales and marketing. To some extent, yes, uh, because uh, uh, if I if I want to go aggressive on the uh, grass, grass, grass acquisition, uh, un until I have a uh, sufficient visibility on the churn, uh, I don't want to because, uh, you know, we acquire customer at... Uh, uh, <clears throat> at who will pay me 3000 rupees a month uh, so until unless he pays me for a um, 6 9 months period uh, it will be a loss making customer to us uh, so if we are uh, not sure of retaining the customer uh, then uh, why unnecessary i mean not that we are reducing the gross addition but we are not growing the gross gross addition uh, sure, sir. Just uh, trying to understand it better. Let's say what you mentioned earlier, that tier three, tier four customer, which were, uh, you know, you acquired earlier and leading to higher churn, then the cut in cost on those area, why we are not investing in the area, like you mentioned that we are not very well penetrated in Karnataka, right? So, so why we are, we, are, we are doing that, you know, so we are, we are, we, that's why I said on an overall gross addition, we have not uh, reduced. I think we are we are still at 95% of the highest ever gross addition. Okay, 5% uh, plus minus keeps happening. But so we have cut down from those areas and doubled down into the uh, uh, metros and those uh, those areas. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, last one on margin, sir. Uh, let's say in steady state uh, uh, where you are adding sub, uh, supplier at uh, 5,000, 6,000 per quarter. Where should be your margin when you will be again spending on sales and marketing? You will be again spending on servicing, uh, assuming whatever operating leverage you will still have. So, what would be steady state margin in that scenario? That's too imaginary to uh, to tell because by that time, if this uh, salary suddenly change as happened in 2022 and in 23, all my uh, uh, you know uh, prophecies. Uh, Go bad. You no, know, otherwise I would have. You know, during the COVID, I I guided you for the 35 percent, but uh, suddenly the salary market changed big time. Uh, so the guidance went bad. So I I think let's just uh, see next two three quarters and and then come back there. So Dinesh, sir, basically what I want to understand is, would we be investing more compared to what we are investing now, and our margin can 
go down but it lower will, than 30%. Uh, our, uh, you know, uh, uh, our normal operating leverage will also show up, right? It is, uh, you know, because the most of the gross margin is, most of the margin is coming from top, gross margin bucket, not from the bottom sales and marketing and GNA and all that. Sure, sure. Sure, sir. The second thing is uh, uh, last quarter you have guided that you know you will achieve 5.5k supplier in quarter two or quarter three. This quarter you said that uh, we are not guiding any supplier addition. So what has changed uh, between the two quarter? Yeah, I mean uh, the, the 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 first entire first quarter uh, churn has been very very stubborn. Uh, so uh, you know for the entire quarter we have been able to do only 1,500 uh, net ads. Um, so I'm, I'm still not able to see that uh, by just doing tier 3, tier 4 uh, cut here and there, uh, those were anyway 10% uh, of the overall customer acquisition. So I think the bigger issue is uh, how do we handle Delhi Bombay uh, kind of a bigger geography churn and we still don't have much answer on that. So I think we are make, going to make uh, big changes on the uh, on the product side now, uh, if you see the unique buyer to multiple inquiry, uh, do you have that slide, Abhijit? The number of uh, times a buyer is being introduced to a supplier. <coughs> if you see, yeah, the ratio of uh, total inquiries, uh, total business inquiries delivered to unique business inquiries, that ratio we are uh, slowly and slowly again uh, converting so that ratio uh, we are looking at uh, probably going towards more like four uh, from six currently we are at 525 million inquiries and 128 was it delivered mm. currently we are at five which we are yeah which used to be at six which used to be now I'm, I'm planning to bring that down to four Sure, sir. Understood. The, just the last one in terms of data. How much is your churn in silver, gold, and platinum category? So, uh, gold and platinum uh, less than one percent per month, and silver monthly is about six percent per an, per month, and silver annual is about uh, you know thirty six percent, three to four percent per per month. Sure, sir. Uh, churn actually uh, slightly increase in platinum as well because last quarter you mentioned. 0.5%? 0.5% in platinum, 1% in uh, gold. Okay, understood. Thanks a lot. Good luck for coming to that. Thank you. So we have another question from the chat box. The question is from Mr. Girish Shetty. Is there any common feedback you are getting from the silver customers who are not renewing? I think people are people are saying so, and that is why we are acting uh, on the competition side. People are saying that it is difficult to do the maturity. So there are buyers, which are, but they are not yet converting. They are they are very price sensitive buyers. Uh, the buyers have become very price sensitive, and uh, we are not able to mature. Uh, so that is something uh, has led us to uh, introduce. One buyer to lesser, you know, earlier we used to do six suppliers, now at five and we are planning to go towards four maybe. Okay. Next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Hi, Amit. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, Amit. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is, uh, obviously, we have seen uh, the growth coming from the ARPU, but if I see the uh, ARPUs in the you know, top 1 and top 10 customers, that there the growth has been much higher than the average levels. 
costs and uh, if i see the increase in the top one uh, you know customers that has been almost flat or 4 to 5% why why so most of the growth in arpu is coming from the existing customers so is it uh, uh, fair to assume that uh, you know the existing customers are buying more and uh, you know so if you can explain what kind of value added services they are getting versus others and also uh, in in terms of uh, the churn that you mentioned that it's very you know like difficult to judge what is you know, causing the churn so if you can throw some light in terms of the selling process is there some mis selling happening from the channel partners and uh, in terms of how the uh, you know acquisition engine and the renewal engine functions is it the same uh, you know like person who is acquiring he is doing the renewals or there is some separate team for both so we have separate uh, divisions we have separate divisions for amit if you are done uh, can you please mute yourself yeah we have separate divisions for uh, new client acquisition uh, and uh, uh, silver customer uh, uh, servicing and key clients division which uh, serves uh, uh, mostly gold and platinum uh, customers at uh, various places for tier 3 tier 4 we have uh, a centralized team here in noida as well as in chennai uh, for tamil speaking uh, areas tamil and malayalam speaking areas uh, for the silver monthly we have a, a dedicated uh, customer uh, team again here in noida and uh, one in chennai so uh, this is how our uh, divisions are structured uh, in terms of uh, 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 arpu growth so uh, yes you are right because uh, most of the uh, changes have happened at the platinum level it is not uh, the price increase but it is the uh, price rationalization uh, for categories which are of higher value uh, and the price rationalization for uh, categories which are of the lower value earlier there was a flat price for everything so uh, it has actually become more rationalized pricing for the customer as well as better realization for us and uh, as i said we haven't changed any pricing for silver monthly and silver annual customers in the last 5 uh, 5 6 years uh, the only change that we did was during the covid uh, where we passed down 20% discount and we uh, removed that discount in fy Uh, end of FY22. So that's the uh, so the most of the uh, and that's the strategy also. So that uh, mm, uh, at the bottom of the pyramid uh, you uh, play the leadership uh, uh, role, uh, whereas the marketplace becomes more richer and richer in terms of data and in terms of uh, verified supplier uh, availability. And uh, once you have enough number of suppliers and uh it is able to attract enough number of buyers uh, uh, then you monetize uh, the suppliers who are uh, uh, who are competing with each other to go towards uh, gold and platinum for more and more uh, buyers and rfq as and buy leads uh, in terms of number of customers net customer growth in the uh, in the top 10 customers uh, yes uh, if we have only moved from 200000 to 215000 in the last 5 6 quarters the uh, top 10% has also increased only from 20000 to 21000 uh, however from the 20000 if you really see uh, there was 10% uh, uh, 10 12% of the churn that also got filled so most of the uh, upgrade is happening from the silver monthly and silver annual towards the gold and platinum in fact uh, uh, this year we have seen a, a lot more number of gold customers uh, over the last uh, that 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 came because of the 50000 odd customers that we increased in the uh, fy23 and mid of fy24 so that is uh, what has result resulting into the continued growth and if this customer growth uh, Uh, stagnates uh, for a longer period of time as i said earlier also it can become a problem for any marketplace and amit just to add okay. uh, when you look at uh, the 
uh, overall ARPU increase in the gold and platinum subscribers. It's also indicative of the fact that the ROI that they right, right, you know, that justifies uh, the extra uh, ARPU that uh, they are willing to pay for subscription to India Mart. And we have not seen uh, the churn, uh, you know, increase despite this increase in the ARPU in the gold and the platinum category. So that's a sticky customer base uh, which continues uh, to uh, you know, pay us more for the ROI that they are already uh, deriving out of the platform. Yeah. No. So uh, obviously, what we're trying to understand is what value the top one and top ten customers are deriving. Obviously, it's the you know, power of the platform wherein uh, you know they are getting the you know, bulk of the traffic. But uh, you know, in terms of the silver monthly is it uh, you know very different in terms of uh, how how the platform functions for a silver monthly versus uh, in terms of rsp generated or in terms of quality of quality of lead being generated the only versus... only difference in the quantity not nothing no difference in the quality of the lead yeah. only difference is so, you get more inquiry more visibility but it does okay. not uh, differentiate between the RFQ quality being distributed either to a silver or to a platinum. And, and so, in fact, uh, most of these customers which are in gold and platinum they are were, were, all over India. were uh, from the silver category itself. These are customers who have been able to build a team, you know, call upon leads, convert customers well, and that is when they have transitioned to a gold or a platinum subscription base. So, therefore, uh, you know, the, the gold platinum subscribers are coming in from that same base mm -hmm. of silver itself. It's just that they've been able to use the platform a lot better than some of the other uh, silver subscribers. Sir, lastly, uh, are we seeing any risk from the ONDC or is ONDC an opportunity for us wherein it can create an additional channel in terms right. of the MSMEs? When, whenever they, 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 whenever they, become popular enough uh, for uh, to be able to attract a B2B, I think it will be good for us. Uh, Abhi, so they are only trying to do uh, very few categories like, uh, uh, you know, taxi and food and maybe some grocery a little bit. So are, uh, are we having any plans to uh, no, go live on ONDC or any, any like Until product? Unless they, they become popular enough in the B2C category and they, uh, uh, you know, uh, see, there is no point being a very early adopter there. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thanks, Amit. Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dorat Capital. Hi, Rahul, please go ahead with your question. Hello. Hi, Rahul. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, Sorry to go into this question, which has been asked so many times, but in a different way this time. Uh, you know, uh, while you're trying to solve this uh, attrition issue or subscriber issue, whatever you want to call it, have we done any analytics around the age demographics or let's say a digital behavior profile of the retained subscriber versus a high attrition uh, to understand a much more deeper cause of it rather than the numerical part of it. We are doing a uh, lot more uh, case studies, a lot more, uh, you know, an, uh, statistical analysis uh, with, within the same category, within the same uh, city, uh, some of the customers uh, end up doing better and some of the customers end up uh, having a a uh, lot more to tell about why this platform is not working for them. Uh, so there are contradictory uh, things available. Uh, one of the most common thing is uh, that uh, that we could see is that uh, it is becoming very, very difficult for us to uh, mature the uh, 
buyer and that is why we are trying to reduce the competition manage the competition within the marketplace so that's one thing that has uh, come out clearly uh, other than that uh, not many uh, anything very common that is uh, emerging some some of the time is uh, uh, very supply many suppliers are very hyper local uh, suppliers so i don't want to deal outside of the noida greater noida while india mart as a platform uh, historically was a global platform then became a national platform then became a regional platform uh, even today it's not a hyper local platform um, i mean you can't have a, that i only deal in the sector in sector 18 and around in noida so uh, sometimes some of those customers who uh, who come in they come with the wrong expectation uh, but other than that uh, mostly it is with respect to either maturity not being there or we are getting very retail buyers because uh, india mart had become popular during the covid even for medicine even for uh, consumer items because consumers were uh, so lot more retail buyers uh, end up coming to india mart uh, despite the fact that there is a minimum order quantity written uh, on the platform the price is so lucrative because india mart is majorly known for two things one is variety of uh, products variety of suppliers and the number two is the cheapest price uh, because uh, india mart does offer the cheapest price uh, for anything uh, in order to and there is no way to avoid uh, retail buyers uh, coming on to any web platform uh, the only thing that we can do is uh, uh, not reform their inquiries or uh, not reform their rfqs uh, because if we are if there is, if we can identify that this buyer is a retail buyer then do not uh, match make him with 3 4 5 uh, sellers so these are the two common feedbacks that we are getting uh, difficult maturity and uh, uh, retail buyers okay i i think that's uh, that's uh, uh, very helpful uh, just one more thing on the apu side uh, you know we we seen significant improvement uh, so is there uh, i mean uh, obvious things uh, are known but is there anything you are doing specifically to raise the value uh, for the uh, high paying subscriber uh, that is uh, driving this kind of a growth and what is the most sustainable growth in arpu for the fy 25 and 26 if you have that in your mind so on the uh, on the value front uh the the effectiveness uh, the the effectiveness of match relevant match making is increasing the the higher the um, engaged the supplier is the better we have his uh, behavioral uh, data so we are able to push the more right kind of inquiries and rfqs to the uh, and that happens even better for a platinum or gold subscriber because we have a very uh, large number of data points which kind of lead he is purchasing and which kind of lead he is not purchasing uh, so that's the value system because if we have a if we have no data about you uh, we will try to uh, uh, send you in buyers only from your locality and uh, for all categories that you have indicated but if we have data about you that then we are able to send um, uh, show you more rfqs which are of your area of interest and of your categories of interest rather than the categories that you have indicated initially because your behavior is lot more uh, lot more repetitive uh, and since gold and platinum has a uh, almost like a daily basis they use the platform they end up leaving a lot of footprint on the platform for us to be able to do a better match making for them and and that helps them uh, get a more relevant lead so that's a uh, general uh, algorithmic thing that that is built into the platform 
The second question was. Yeah, appreciated the color. I mean, uh, you you touched one important element where you said uh, you can't help out much in terms of retailer uh, retail buyer coming onto the platform, but definitely just like you have uh, taken better control on the telesales part of it maybe the next step over over the period of time would be to take uh, care of the customer acquisition uh, the the channel partner thing eventually into the system wherein the understanding of the onboarding process and where is the mismatch happening in terms of expectation versus outcome would be more closely monitored within the guardrails of the organization I think that may probably help uh, at least on incremental basis, if not for the existing set. Yeah, thank you. Good suggestion. Yeah. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Dinesh Agrawal for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining our uh, quarter one FY25 conference call. We have tried to address your queries in the time available, but if you still have any questions, please feel free to connect with our investor relations team. Their contact details are available on our website. Thank you very much. Have a great evening and uh, see you next time. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of India Mart, we now conclude this webinar. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Record.